Good morning. Welcome to day number two in South Korea, Seoul. Uh, it is about 9, 9.30am and I am about to head out for my second day of exploration in Korea. Now today is going to be all about exploring the more traditional side of Seoul. So I'm going to be heading to a couple of palaces, uh, maybe check out a museum or two and definitely, definitely dress up in their traditional costume and click a few pictures. I stepped out of the hotel and it is super 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 bright sunny and hot so just giving you a slight heads up about the weather in Seoul yesterday it was humid and drizzling and all of that and today it's just bright sunny and hot so make sure you carry comfortable clothing which is not going to make you especially if you're traveling during like July or, or June or July make sure you carry like comfortable loose clothing in which you won't feel too hot okay uh, so I'm at the store called what is the store's name? Uh, store name Dragon Beer the Dra store's name is yeah, same. Right? Yeah, Dragon Beer. Okay, so uh, I'm here at this dessert store. Uh, it's like a small kiosk in Insadoc. And uh, I'm trying out a specialty Korean dessert. Uh, this is called yeah, Dragon Beer. Because it's made up of these like, really fine strands. And it's, uh, it's made in different flavors. You just given me a taste of all that Oreo flavor. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, whatever you're making or this? Long time ago, Korean King Biscuit, King Dessert, made of this, is made by honey. Uh, white powder, corn flour. Honey, now very hot, like stone. Uh, but I will make 16,300 stretch. Now, uh, first, make whole stretchy, stretchy, little by little, slowly, slowly. Little by little. Uh, now, honey, one string. Start one, right? One double two, four double eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, five hundred one. Middle size, one thousand twenty-four. Look at my hand. Yeah, jazan. Wow. wow. O M G, right? <laughs> 난 얘기할 거예요. 2,000, 4,000, 8,000. Last count, 16,300 stretch. Looks like my grandmommy hair. Guiding. Okay, highlight. Tadam. Honey, outside honey, inside nut special flavor. Many, many pudding. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy for your tummy. Jussie. Very, very soft and delicious. Jussie. Uh, you can keep outside one moss. Expired outside one moss. Or represent three moss. Yeah. You take home. Okay. Uh, India, no problem. Uh, nut traditional flavor, Oreo chocolate and salt chocolate. Best seller, nuts and chocolate. Best seller. Korean king dessert. Can you make a mix of all three? Uh, just one flavor. One box, one flavor. Nuts. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I actually bought a whole box of the nut flavor Let us try how it tastes. Mm. All good. Very nice, sweet, not too sweet. And the strands of the rice flour, right? This is rice flour? Corn flour. Corn flour? Yeah. Some strands are made out of corn flour. They are very sweet and like, have a very satisfying texture. Really, really good. Highly recommend. How much for the box of? Uh, one box nuts traditional flavor eight thousand. Chocolate 8, and, yeah, chocolate so and one box nine thousand. So I found this like really cute accessory store. Okay, right here in Insadong, and they ha they have these really cool like bubble uh, handbags. Uh, these are priced at nine thousand nine hundred Korean moms only, which is like six hundred and twenty Indian rupees or something. And the quality is so good, so good. I'm definitely picking this one up. And they have a bunch of colors in these. Hi, I'm here at this beautiful cafe called Soha Salt Pond. They saw different types of breads and coffees. We already picked up the breads that we wanted and now this is a coupon for coffee. Alright, so my food is here. I have ordered for one of their classic salt breads and along with the side of a cafe latte. Let's see how they are. The bread looks so fluffy and soft. It 
it sort of tastes like a pretzel with like the salt crystals on top. But like a more softer, well baked kind of pretzel. Cheers. Right now I'm here at this store called Hampok Town, uh, where you can actually get Hampoks on rent. Okay, so they have two varieties. Uh, you can get the regular one or the premium one. For a one and a half hour rental, you pay thirty thousand Korean won for the regular one and forty five thousand for the premium one. So this is how they make you wear the handpop. They've actually put like a internal like a lining, I think, which is canny can. So this is gonna hold up the puffiness of the skirt. Okay, okay, sure. So, um, after you have, so uh, this is your outfit, and then after you're done with this, you can pick any handbag and then you can also pick a hairband. So, both these are actually included in the rental for the outfit. And then they also do your hair, as you can see, they have uh, all of these hairdos on display here. So, if you actually uh, so if you actually want to get one of these hairdos done, then you have to pay some extra charges for it and get it done. The second one is for the ladies. Okay. Uh, the third one is for the married woman. Ma married woman. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, all right. And the first one? First one is like just for the nowadays for the okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Now, so I am getting a hairdo done. Which one are we doing for me? Uh, whichever you think will look good. Uh, second one is like the back, it looks clean. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll do the second one. The second one. Also because I'm not married, so it only makes sense <laughs> to get that one. Can you say hi to the camera? She did my hair. <laughs> to see the main royal palace of South Korea, the Gyeongbokgung Palace and I am wearing the traditional Korean dress, the Hanbok. Now I'm here at the Gyeongbokgung Palace. This is uh, the largest of the five royal palaces that are here in Korea. As you can see, it has beautiful courtyards and all of these surrounding structures. And then uh, right behind me, what you can see is kind of like the main structure of the palace. This palace has been destroyed and then restored. It has a very, very rich history uh, that dates back to the 13th or 14th century. So uh, the current version of the palace that you see is actually a really nicely restored virgin. You can see all the traditional architectural elements over here and uh, just uh, I just caught a very nice uh, traditional Korean performance as well. So these performances happen at four or five different time points during the day. So make sure when you come here catch a performance and do not come here without dressing up in the traditional dress because it makes for such great pictures. So this behind me, this area that you can see is actually the main throne of the king. Uh, so we stopped for a 
quick cold beverage and I wanted to try something local so I'm trying out this beverage called Sikhye. It's like rice water but it also has a few cooked grains of rice and pine nuts. So people made it at, make it at home also but you uh, can also get it like a canned packed beverage. It's like lightly sweet and mm, watery but at the same time you can get those cooked rice grains so it's slightly chewy as well in the middle. So as you can see, uh, I am standing here right outside Gyeonghoru. So Gyeonghoru is like this um, open pavilion, a two-storied pavilion that actually used to be used for royal banquets and other events. And also there is a very beautiful serene kind of pond behind me. So the royal family also used to go boating in this pond as uh, just a form of recreation. So just a small tip for whenever you're coming to uh, visit the Gyeongbokgung Palace. The palace grounds are huge, okay, huge. So when you actually enter, you go to the main hall or the main area of the palace, which is like a big courtyard and where the throne is. And then after that, you have these like small, small pavilions. So they are, um, they had different functions. There are some pavilions which used to be uh, places where uh, the royal gatherings or banquets happened. And a few of these are possibly their living quarters, but then, uh, uh, you, you don't really have access to that. Then there is also a Korean uh, museum that's there, one of the structures. So uh, I would highly recommend that get a map before you come in here so that you, because I got really confused where to go and what to see. So get a small map if you can so that you can figure out where all you really want to go. And uh, keep a significant amount of time because the, uh, the grounds are huge. So if you want to explore everything, it's going to take you at least three or four hours. Also before I go, last uh, point, most important point, uh, the entry ticket uh, for this palace is 3000 Korean won. but if you rent out a hanbok like I have, uh, then you can enter for free. Okay, so it's day two in Korea and I'm actually trying out a um, proper Korean meal. So this is like a meal hot pot sort of a thing, okay? So it has a, a spicy broth. Uh, I've ordered for the original chicken meal. So it has pieces of fried chicken boiling in a spicy broth. There's tteokboki, which is made out of uh, sticky rice flour. Like it's a chewy rice flour preparation. There's some ramen also. There's uh, boiled eggs and there is some greens, like some veggies. So this essentially is like a whole bowl meal sort of a thing that two to three people can share. You're so satisfying. So broke your ramen. Always a winner. Next, I made a quick pit stop to buy some BT21 souvenirs from the store called Line Friends. So right down the street from my hotel is this cute little place called Edia Coffee. Uh, I have been eyeing it for the past two days now, so just had to uh, stop by to get a quick uh, cup of coffee. Ah, uh, the palace, the. Uh, Gyeongbokgung Palace actually took a significant amount of time so after that I could just like grab a meal and relax for a bit so I'm going to go back to my room freshen up a little bit and then I'm going on an evening hop on hop off bus tour uh, which actually covers a lot of spots so I'm going to take some rest and then get ready for the evening tour which starts at 7 p.m. As you can see, I'm walking to the hop on hop off bus tour pickup point and it was quite a long walk, like almost about half an hour, 45 minutes from my hotel. Uh, now, just a quick tip, Google Maps does not function in South Korea. So there is another application called uh, Naver, N-A-V-E-R. Okay, so I have been using this application to navigate everywhere. So make sure you download that. Uh, that's the easiest way to map it because you are not going to be able to access Google Maps. So um, I just came to this uh, stop, which is the Seoul City Tour Bus Stop. Uh, now, uh, 
I have bought a ticket. The tour timings will vary depending upon the uh, month in which you come here. So I am here right now on, on the first of July. So uh, the the city bus tour, uh, the night bus tour today starts at eight o'clock. So I'm gonna kill some time till eight and then come here at eight o'clock. Uh, the ticket cost me twenty thousand Korean won. Time for the night bus tour. You, as you can see, all the buses have lined up here. You have the option of double decker or single decker. Uh, sadly, the double decker buses were sold out for today, so I had to get the single decker one. But nonetheless, I am excited. Let's go. Okay, so that's my bus. Come, let's board. Okay, so I have boarded the bus, and um, you have two options. You have a, an air conditioned section as well as a open. To the sky section. I've obviously chosen the open to the sky section. I honestly don't know what to expect from this tour, uh, so let's just take it as it goes. Okay, so they've actually given us uh, headphones in which I think there's going to be information about whatever uh, things we're seeing, and then you have multiple language options. Uh, the, the bus is actually really cool. The seats even have seat belts for safety, which is pretty cool. The city of Seoul is vibrant and beautiful even at night. Brightly lit up skyscrapers and artistic bridges across the Han River give you all the feels. Halfway through my night bus tour, and the uh, point at which it actually stops midway is here at the N Seoul Tower. Uh, I'm going to come back here during the day as well, but this tower at night is a whole other vision. It's like beautifully lit up and green colored lights, and I can't wait to go up to the top and see the view of the city. The road leading up to the N Seoul Tower is itself is so pretty. So this is basically Mount Namasan, and there's a whole park around it. Okay, so the locals uh, come here to like run, exercise, and the um, the weather here is so pleasant because it's like super green, and I can see the locals like running and jogging, exercising. It would be such a nice place to live. Right behind me, you can see the N Seoul Tower, and then right here is a viewpoint from the, where you can actually get. gorgeous bird's eye view of the entire city it honestly looks so beautiful i'm so glad i came here at night okay so uh, i was trying to go uh, to the top of the n seoul tower but because i'm a on the hop on hop of bus tour i only have half an hour here and there was a big queue at the ticket counter and there's a waiting of 30 minutes to go to the top to take the elevator up to the top so i've decided to skip it i just uh, got a gorgeous view of the city from this viewing point behind me and then i'm going to come to the n seoul tower during the day and then uh, just see it then or maybe i'll try if another day I can find some time. Okay, so guys, uh, an honest opinion. I just got done with the night city bus tour, and honestly, don't think it was worth it at all. Uh, the bus tour kind of so it doesn't really stop anywhere till the point you don't get to the N Seoul Tower. On the way, uh, they had given us earphones, but the information was very like patchy and like it didn't really. Uh, when the audio was playing, it wasn't really matching with where we were at that point. And then after the N Seoul Tower, there was no information, and we were just right away dropped off at the end point. So it wasn't really uh, worth while, I would say. So. Not very happy about it. Okay, so since I saw this gorgeous, vibrant street in Insadong yesterday, I uh, was hell bent on trying out uh, the street food here at least once. So yeah, I'm here today to try it out. I am here at uh, one of these uh, street food joints, and I've called for an order of chicken skewers, an order of clams, and uh, to go with it, a bottle of soju. Let us start tasting the clams, shall we? Piping hot. He's like literally made it super fresh. Mm. Oh wow! Very lightly seasoned. The flavor is 
So what is this? I'm also excited for the chicken skewers. Till then, let's pour out some soju. Cheers. Please. Please, please. Please. Oh wow, the sweet food is amazing. I think this has to be one of my favorite meals here. So good. So that was my second day exploring the vibrant city of Seoul in South Korea. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please come back for the next episode and watch the previous one if you haven't already. Also, please hit the subscribe button. Bye.